praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'd be sometimes I'd be so out of breath. Hallelujah. But I thank the Lord for my breath. And I'm going to praise him with it. Hallelujah. He gave me this air in my lungs. And I'm going to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody had to pump me up. Nobody had to tell me to stand up. Nobody had to tell me to clap my hands. Nobody had to say lift him up to the Lord. Because I am grateful. Hallelujah for every ache and every pain. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for this air that's in my body, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. If you haven't said thank you today, Lord, I just want to thank you. If you haven't thanked him for waking you up, hallelujah. He want to hear from you. Lord, I just want to thank you. wanna love you hallelujah lord i just wanna love you i wanna love you the way you wanna be loved hallelujah hallelujah lord i just wanna love you i wanna love you for it. I don't care if it's a problem, a bill, something that you don't like. Thank you, Jesus. Because he'll change that thing around. Hallelujah. He'll, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer and praise will change that thing around. It will change your mind. Hallelujah. When you're tormented by things in the middle of the night, guess what? Praise him. Hallelujah. And thank him for it. And ask him to change your mind. Yes. He'll open your mind up about those things. Hallelujah. And he'll give you a new perspective. Yes. Yes. 
and you'll see it the way he sees it yes. Thank you, Jesus. and not out of your own eyes so lord jesus we thank you right now for transforming our minds lord jesus for renewing our minds lord jesus for renewing our purpose and plan lord jesus that you have for us lord jesus thank you for your hunger and thirst for righteousness sake lord jesus thank you lord jesus for just being god hallelujah thank you lord jesus just for the manifold blessings that you give every day lord jesus you woke us up thank you you we got a roof over our head thank you we got food in our bellies thank you we got shoes on our feet thank you hallelujah we ain't asking for a million lord thank you jesus for what we got hallelujah thank you and we give you all praise glory and honor thank you for the word that's coming on today hallelujah that's gonna get us through this week lord jesus hallelujah in jesus name jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah we should all be standing i'm sorry i didn't give you that direction but we should all be standing and we're going to read hebrews 11 and 1. this is our um theme scripture for the month we're talking about faith we're talking about faith so we're going to believe those things that we don't see hallelujah hallelujah i don't know how i'm gonna pay that bill but hey Guess what? I'm believing that God is going to pay it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I don't see how I'm going to finish that, that, that class. Hey, but God is going to do it. He's going to help me through it. Hallelujah. I don't see how it's going to get better at work with the co-worker, but hey, Yes, I'm Lord. here to Thank tell you Jesus. that he will do it. Hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. And he will, hallelujah, he'll change that thing around. Hallelujah. 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 He'll change that thing around. They'll be buying you gifts yeah. and thanking you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm a living witness that it will happen. Yeah. So let's go to Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. I turn you over into the hands of the sanctuary choir. Sing with us. The songs aren't that hard. Hallelujah. Keep it going. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we have come we have to come give you praise, to praise, Holy One, Holy Ancient one, of Days. Day. We have come we have with come victory, filled with love we and love liberty. liberty. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the King. Of we have come we have in come victory, victory filled with love, love and liberty. liberty. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the King. Oh, we have come, we have come to come give you praise.
Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Listen, 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 listen. Come on, stop clapping. Stop singing. Listen. Listen. If everybody get up and praise God, y'all will feel great. Listen, 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 listen. If y'all would just get on your feet, the choir is not here to entertain you. Y'all hear me? So all of y'all that sit down, wait a minute, stop clapping. It is not their job to entertain you. We are not here to entertain nobody. We are here praising God. Now, it just so happens that the choir is the leading people group to get us to do that. But then, listen, you ain't at no concert. We're here to praise God. So y'all stop sitting on your behind. Sit here like they're here to entertain you. They're not here to entertain. We're here to praise God. If you, watch this, watch this. If you would just, if you would just get on your own feet and, in, and praise God, you'd be amazed at how good you would feel. We're not here to entertain you. We're not here to try to look good. We're here because we thinking about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. And my soul, my soul is crying out. I command my soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul to bless. Come on, hold your feet. I command my soul to bless the Lord.
Ready to say drum, drum. And they're like, oh, it's a nice concert. It ain't no concert. Amen. Just sitting there. Amen. Get on your feet. Clap your hands. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta move. Yeah. 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 You, gotta, you gotta get tired, get hot, get focused. Yeah. Y'all go to all them ball games and stuff when you yell and scream and you come out funky. Come on, leave the house of God musty. That's right. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Flap them on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Throw up some sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, women, y'all need to perspire, and men, y'all need to sweat. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the God. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. All the stuff God has done for us, you ought to be glad to move. You ought to be glad we can move. There's a lot of folks out there that can't move. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, it's offering time since I'm up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes, is. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. you you getting your tithes and offering ready, listen, listen. The church is growing. So y'all got to stop bringing all this junk, Amen. taking up seats. We got a coat rack out there. Amen. I done told y'all, kids, don't bring your toys. I done threw away enough of y'all toys. No, you don't bring toys to church. Amen. I don't care about you, little. You come to church, you sit there, you listen to me preach. Amen. Hang them coats up. Y'all come in here like it's freezing in here. I can make it cold now if you want to keep your coat on. Make it cold. 
Now, if you're going to take it off, you ain't get rid of it. And then you're going to wear it, wear it. But you can't let it lay in no chair. Stop putting all of this stuff under the seats. Amen. Stop putting all this stuff. I know Nina got a baby. She got too many bags. You minimize. Beverly, you let her bring one bag to church and it suffice everything. Everything else, leave it in the car. Make it work. We need the room. Amen. I'm going off on everybody. So somebody say you're going off on who? Who? Who am I going off on? Everybody. Okay. So let's clear that up. We need the room. I'm not ready to send nobody to the overflow yet. Y'all just got to squeeze in. So when people come in and the ushers ask you to move, don't give them no cross-eyed look. Because if I see you do it, I'm going to interrupt. Just make room for them. We got coat rack. You know, you, you don't have to bring all of this junk y'all carry. <laughs> Amen. You don't need it. You at church. You don't need your makeup bag in the church. <laughs> your makeup bag. Y'all women can put it in your bathroom. I don't care. We ain't having church in the bathroom. But we need the room. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We need the room. Amen. When it's time to move folk to the next room, then we'll do that. But right now, we don't have to do that. Y'all just got to, you know, them, them seats are pretty wide. Let's <laughs> believe that right there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on. It's offering time. Come on, let the church shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Follow the directions of the ushers and the officers. Give your tithe, give your offering. Amen. Amen. And remember, we're here to praise God. Amen. When the choir sing, you're here to praise God. When I'm preaching, you're here to hear God. Amen. It's not to entertain. We ain't here to be entertained. Amen. Amen. You're going to, if you want to be entertained, entertain yourself. You sing. Amen. Amen. All right. Choir, ushers, officers. How great is thy faithfulness, Lord. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three, one, two, ready, magnify. Magnify the Lord with me, whom the Son he hath redeemed. Clap your hands, rejoice, and sing. You are Lord of everything. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. Magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. Who the sun is breathing. Who the sun is Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. You are Lord of everything. You are Lord of everything. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. For the Lord our God is great. For the Lord our God is great. Perfect Lord, perfect Lord in all your ways. God of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of grace. Holy One, Holy One, ancient of I will bless the Lord. I bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
No, it's going go. go, it's going to go off again. Oh, it's, oh, it's coming on again. Huh? Well, no, if it did it once, it's going to do it a second time. Something is new. I'll take it out. Bring me the hand here. Amen. 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 Check one, two. Nothing like being saved, huh? Yeah. Oh, that now, now he gave me a whole lot of volume. Come on, turn it down a little bit. Little bit, little bit, little bit. Faith, we're talking about faith. Perfect. We're talking about faith. Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. God done already told me I got to preach tonight, so I don't know who preached, who the elder Whitfield, I think, so you off the hook. Amen. And then I was saying, I said, well, Lord, since I got to get him off the hook, let him get me off the hook, and he can do Adam West. He said, no, he ain't. You're doing Adam West, too. <laughs> yes, sir. We ain't going to fight, Lord. You're right. I'm, 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 I'm going to be obedient. Amen. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. What does it say? Come on, read it again from the top. Everybody read it. What does it say? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, not and the evidence, the evidence of things. See, you get a lot of people and they quote it and they say, and. That's why I tell y'all, stop quoting stuff. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it until you got it right. Amen. And if you don't get it right, I still hear bishops and everybody saying, I've been set free. When they going to get that right? You ain't been set. Well, maybe they were set free. You know? But I was made free. Now, maybe they were set free. The devil can't capture me no more. Because I refused to give in to him. Before he captured me and I didn't have a problem. I mean, I, I couldn't do nothing about it. I can do something about it now. I'm made free. Amen. And ain't nobody going to capture me but Jesus Christ. Verse 2 said what? Because they had faith, for by it the elders obtained a, I want a good report. I want a good report. The only way I can get a good report, I got to walk by faith. I want a good report. The title of the message today is Substance is Evidence. Substance is Evidence. But in order to walk in faith, substance is not visible, is it? Substance is not visible, is it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's only visible if you have faith. Because faith is what's going to make you do what you need to do to get the, to get the substance. And the substance is the evidence. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm going I'm to help you out with that a little bit. Come on. Let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 4. I got a lot to give y'all today, so that's why I got to preach. That's why I got to preach all day. Put it like that. <coughs> you can't be a novice over here. See, too many people are preaching on what they done heard. That's why you got too many preachers. Like I told y'all on Wednesdays, our subject is going to be sound doctrine. Amen. Because people don't have sound doctrine. Sound doctrine come about. You got physical experience. You don't get physical experience without faith. You got to remember the word substance and evidence is the definition of faith. So now the problem we have is understanding really what the definition of faith is. So he tells you faith is the substance. Sub now you can't see faith. Faith just has to be an action. Amen. Your actions become your substance. Amen. And then your substance prove that you believe what you said you believe in, which we call the evidence. So you got to understand substance is the evidence. Amen. Of what faith supposed to be. 
So you got to understand now, we're really talking about faith. So to, today and all while we're talking about, all we're doing is defining the word faith in such great detail so you can understand sin is not having faith. Faith is stepping out on nothing, believing something is there. Amen? Acts chapter 4. You got to, we have to live a life where people know we believe what we believe by what we do. See, you can walk around all you want and talking about you believe in Jesus Christ going to heal you, but you're getting surgery. So you ain't got no faith. There's no evidence. Because when you get through, you're going to thank the doctor. I don't see nowhere in the Bible where Jesus performed surgery on nobody. Close as he came to surgery, he spit in some dirt and made some mud and slapped it on their face. But he didn't have to cut them open. Amen. That's the closest I've seen him. And a lot of occasions, he just said, according to your faith, it's done. He didn't do nothing. On one occasion, or a couple of them, he didn't even go to the person's house. He said, you believe I can do this? He said, well, it's done, man. Amen. Hallelujah. What are we talking about? And when they went home, the boy or the girl, whatever it was, was sitting there in their right, ooh, glory, in their right mind. You and I have to live a life. Amen. Uh, and that's why I, I, I was quoting verse two. He said, I, I want to hear, I want to hear a good report. I want to hear God say, man, John got a good report because he done stepped out on some stuff. I know. Wow. Amen. Sam, wake up, get a Bible. Go get a Bible. You didn't come to church to go to sleep. You want to go, you want to sleep, you stay at home. Amen. Uh, uh, Derek, I want you on that door every Sunday. That's your job. So Aaron, where are you? You don't have to do it no more. Amen. Keep Derek on that door. Amen. Yo, yo, your first line of duty is to protect me. So whoever come through that door, you see if they going to harm the pastor. Don't worry about everybody else. See if they can harm me first. If they can't harm me, then you let them in. That's your first line of duty. Now, I know ain't nobody coming in the door to harm me, but that's, don't you think like that. You think, because that's your job, is to sit there and make sure... Are you coming to get pastor or not? <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Come on. We in Acts chapter 4, verse 1. Read. What does it say? And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. See, they talking about stuff that ain't normal. But watch, watch what happened at the end. See, Peter and them are saying things that folk think he's crazy. Like folk think I'm crazy about what I say. You know why? Because they don't read. They don't know. In order for you to prove Jesus, prove to Jesus that you believe in him, is to do what he tell you without him putting a dime in your pocket. Jesus took money out of my pocket and told me to go start a church. <laughs> don't that sound crazy? You're going to start a church, but give me all your money. Well, wait a minute. How you expect me to do that? Faith. Faith. Come on. Read verse 3. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day. For it was now. They got in trouble for doing something that had not been done. I got in trouble for starting a church with no money. Lost everything. Lost everything. But I kept on talking about Jesus. Come on. What am I saying? I don't care how bad it get. I don't care how bad life get. And if you say you save and you believe in Jesus, you keep right on going. Amen. That's going to be your uh, 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 substance. Your substance is I may not see it and I may not have it, but you said it. So I'm going as if it's there. That's your substance. Your substance is on the fact God said it. Say it again. Your substance is the fact that God said it, which we call faith. Come on, read verse three again from the top. And they hands on them and put them in hold until the next day. For it was now it was in the evening. Come on, read verse four. How be it? Many of them which heard the word believed and the number of men was about they done locked up the disciples or the apostles, but folks done started talking about what they were talking about. So now you're getting some evidence. Amen. Now people are starting to believe what they said. Now the people going to get more upset. Come on, read. That's why I say, y'all, we're going to turn this world upside down. Come on, verse 5, he said what? 
And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and scribes and Annas, the high priest, and Cyprus, and John, and Alexandra, and as many of the kindred of the high priest was gathered together. So you got a lot of, you got nepotism going now. The priest got his whole family. Because if they don't agree with their daddy, granddaddy, uncle, or cousin, they ain't going to eat. They live in high off the hall because of their priest or their relative that's running the show. So now you got a, a relative running and everybody got to agree. That's what's wrong with a lot of churches today. Let their family take over. They know, ain't no listen. Sister Porter, Jeremiah, Joseph, Quint, Letitia, Kenny, ain't none of them going to take over the church. I don't know who's going to get it when I'm gone. Until God tell me, what am I saying? Family members, you ain't got no more authority than a regular church member over here. Because all y'all got to obey God. Amen. The priest was wrong allowing his family member to run the church. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. So that's why you get folks so quick to believe, well, my dad is right. You know your daddy is a whore. And you're going to listen to him. It's because he's the priest. Come on. Read. Verse what? Seven. Read. He said what? And when they... In the midst they act. By what power? Or by what name? Now they know doggone well. That's all they've been preaching for the last few days. They know the name. They want to see have we frightened you enough by putting you in jail. So when God put y'all through test and trial and y'all come out, who y'all give credit to? Are y'all giving credit to the banker? Y'all giving credit to your company? Y'all giving credit to the doctor? Y'all giving credit to your, 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 your friends? Amen. So when God put you through something because you trusted in him and when you come out, what are you going to say? They know dog on well. Them people, them boys were preaching in the name of Jesus. And then when they come out, okay, now who now? Where, 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 where y'all get this information from? You know where we got it from. We preached about it two days ago. Amen. Come on, read. Verse 8, he said what? Peter. Then Peter. Then Peter. Then Peter. Are y'all filled with the Holy Ghost? Are y'all filled with the Holy Ghost? Or do y'all have the Holy Ghost? Are y'all filled with the Holy Ghost? Or do y'all have the Holy Ghost? Because when you have it, you may not be able to stand on what you believe. But if you filled up with it, that's all going to come out your mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Verse 8 from the top. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, and said unto them, Ye rulers, ye rulers, what of the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you. See, you get people that want to criticize Church of Apostolicity but well, why can't y'all stand and say the only reason I'm better is because Church of Apostles. Listen, because of Jesus. Listen, because of Jesus, the way he preached Jesus, that's why I'm doing better. Because I listened to you, Bishop or Elder, and you didn't help me. But when I listen to that, that version of Jesus, that's the only reason I'm in my right mind. Now, if I'm crazy because I'm thinking right, then I'm going to get crazier because I just got a hold of Jesus. And ain't nobody bamboozled me. Ain't nobody begged me for no money. Ain't nobody slept with me. All he told me... I I was a whore on my way to hell and if I didn't fix it Amen. hallelujah Thank you. now if that made me better they mad cause Peter came along and healed a man that couldn't walk cause the man said uh, uh, can y'all give me something and Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have that I give in the name of Jesus I got Jesus rise up and walk and I'm wrong for preaching Jesus I'm wrong for, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. What are we talking about? Substance is evident. They saw the substance and they knew it was evident because that man had been lame from birth. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, y'all, all of us been lame from birth, but not, oh, glory, hallelujah, but we got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen, why can't we show evidence that we are better? Come on, next verse, read. What does it say? Be it known. I'm sorry, verse 11. He said, this is the stone which ye said at naught of your builders. I'm preaching the same Jesus everybody else preaching. So why y'all ain't y'all getting the same evidence? Why ain't y'all getting the same evidence? 
You know why they don't get the same evidence? Because they ain't preaching the same Jesus. They ain't got the same substance. They don't have the faith. They got faith in junk. They ain't got faith in Jesus. They got faith in things. They don't have faith in Jesus. That's why you can't get the evidence. Hallelujah. When you got people that giving up on God because of problem, because of sick relative, listen, that means they don't have faith in God. Hallelujah. You want a good report? Then you got to show some substance. What's the substance? Do whatever God tell you and the evidence will be. Oh, hallelujah. Thank Thank you, Jesus. The reason people believe a lot of false preaching because they all got the same evidence. What am I saying? They all got the same disbelief or lack of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What verse we at? 12? He said, neither. Neither. I would not serve a God that tell me to hate folk. I, I can hate folk without a God telling me to do that. I don't need a God tell me to dislike you. I can do that by myself. But I need a God to tell me to love you when I ought to dislike you. Now, nah, nah, that's a God. Convincing me to love you when I hate you? I don't need no God to tell me. I don't need Muhammad to tell me to hate white folks. I grew up around white folks abusing black folks. I don't need no help in hatred. So I need a God to tell me to hate somebody I can hate just like that. Oh, hallelujah. So I need a God to tell me I can have four wives. I don't need you to tell me to have four wives. I done have four women, five women. So don't, I don't need no help in that. Give me some help in what I can't do. I can get some women. I can hate folk. I, I, I don't need a God to tell me how to lie. Man, how you think I got four women? I was lying. <laughs> hallelujah. I don't need no God. To, I don't need Muhammad to tell me how to, how to be slick. I don't need nobody to tell me how to violate the rules of the United States. I can do that all by my own self. But I need a God to tell me how to hate folk, how to be slick. I don't need no God to tell me how to do that. I can do that on my own. Give me a God to tell me the way I think is wrong. Yes. Now, wait a minute. Now, y'all, I got a loving enemy. Come on, seriously. Why? Why? Why can't I cheat on my taxes? All of the senators and representatives doing it. All of the rich folks are doing it. Why can't a poor man cheat on taxes? So I don't, do y'all get, I don't need nobody to tell me how to be crooked. I need somebody to tell me how to get straight. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the only person can do that is Jesus Christ. Come on, read verse 4, 12. Say what? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby ye. I, there ain't nobody can help us be saved but Jesus Christ. Nobody else. And then, then after I get him, I got to know how to do it. I got to learn how to do it. Well, well, you know, the law and know, yes, he know how you are. That's why he came and died, because he know how we are. But we can't get to heaven the way we are. We got to change. The Bible put it this way. You got to be born again. You got to start all, start all over. Start all over. Wait a minute, man. I'm 28 years old. What you mean start all over? Hey, Amen. I know how to be nice. No, you don't, John. No, you don't. No, you don't. I know how to make some money. No, you don't. No, you don't. Come on, we'll get to that later on. Sometime before the month is over. Come on, what verse we at? 13? Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This, this, I love that. He said, when they heard, I, I know, when they saw the boldness, they perceived, they knew, watch this, they knew the way them men talk they didn't have no kind of formal education. Knew they were ignorant. See, they don't mean ignorant as in not knowing Jesus. They mean they was ignorant because they didn't pronounce words right. They didn't make complete sentences. They were saying, ain't. They were saying, nah. They were saying things that wasn't worried. They said, but they, these guys are ignorant. They, they, they couldn't even speak correct or, or, or Greek or Chaldeans. They couldn't do it. But watch this. But what else did they say? And they took, come on, read. And they took knowledge of them. Wait a minute. They took knowledge, but yet they stopped and listened. Like, man, these are some ignorant folks. 
And all these intellectuals, educated folks are listening to these bunch of ignorant men. So what in the world is going on? We're talking about substance is evidence. Substance is evidence. How can John get gangbangers and talk to them like they're ignorant and they keep going back listening to them? When them guys used to shoot somebody if they yelled at them. How, how you getting women to keep coming to church and you telling them they ain't nothing but some whores and they need to fix themselves? How you keep them coming back? No women know they ain't no whore, but you keep telling them they keep coming back listening to you, even with an attitude. How you do that? Amen. They, take, they took knowledge because they knew they were saying something that was right, regardless of how it was verbalized. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all listen. Regardless of how it was verbalized, they still went back and listened again. Come on. And then they said what? He said that they had been with Jesus. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. What they are saying, how in the world can somebody be so ignorant and convince other folk that this Jesus is real? Because when you preach Jesus right, it's going to touch the people hard. When you preach Jesus right, you make folk deal with reality. When you preach Jesus right, so now you got substance because you know if the scripture say you got a whore's forehead, God said it, you said, and let everybody else deal with it. And God say, I'll deal with them, John. You just tell the truth. What am I saying? When you use what you believe, and I believe the Bible is right. That's why I use the Bible. That's why I don't use John. I believe the Bible is right. I believe the Bible is right from Genesis to Revelation. I don't think there's one flaw in it. I don't think there's one error in it. I believe is right. So when I preach it, that's what they were doing. I'm going to preach every night. And then when folks start changing, they're going to say, that man must be saying something right because them folks keep going over there. How can you preach that hard and, and say those things, Portis, and folks still want to hear you preach? And then you get some old no good preacher Gonna come and tell some of my saints, y'all love y'all pastor to a fault. Y'all love y'all, no, they don't love me to no fault. They love the word of God. And it ain't to no fault. I just happen to be the dispenser or disperser of the word of God. Listen, they don't love, cause they don't listen to me. Y'all don't let y'all listen to the word of God. Oh, but see, that show you somebody trying to get y'all off because y'all say, y'all, listen, y'all do whatever he tell y'all to do. Now y'all do what the word of God tell y'all to do. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? We talking about sub, y'all got substance and they become evident and now people got a problem with it. Come on. Let, let's go to, let's go to first Timothy chapter three. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because I tell y'all and everybody, if it ain't in the Bible, I won't say it. If I do say it, I'm going to say this is John is talking. And then I throw a loop on that and I like to think I got the Holy Ghost just like y'all do. That's what Paul did, ain't it? Paul said, since he said, now this is me, not the word, but this is me. Paul didn't know that was still God talking. Hallelujah. Paul, you, 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 let, you let some of your emotions come out, which was needed in order to explain the point you was trying to make. Hey, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. First Timothy chapter three. You got it? Substance. Substance. Watch this. I love this. We're going to have fun today, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all listen to me preach all day today. Can y'all do that for me? If, if, if y'all love me to a fault, amen, <laughs> follow me today. Here, down the street, and then back. Because this, this is a good message today, man. I think it's good because I think all of them good, though. Come on. Watch this. Substance means to show that you have substance or faith in God, you have to realize you're inferior to God. Y'all know what inferior means? He more powerful than I am. That's your substance. When you realize God is more powerful, so they mean if God say slap that brick and you will get some water. Now you know there is no water in a brick. You know that. But you're inferior. So your substance is 
I'm going to listen to that powerful being that tells me there's water in that rock. You pick the rock up. Ain't no water in this rock. But your substance is, you believe and are a supreme being. I'm inferior to God. That's my substance. The evidence is going to be when I slap the rock and water come out. Because of my inferiorness to God, I'm going to slap this rock. And I know, according to my ability and my education, ain't no water in that rock. Talk about substance. Another definition for substance is your support. I need somebody to depend on because I want water. And I can't get none. I done dug and dug. I found a stream and it wasn't no water. It was all dried up. I dug and dug. And then somebody that's got more power than me come along and tell me it's water in that rock, John. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> water in this rock. Somebody come along and tell me, give me your 10% of all your money and I'll make your 90% turn into 120%. No, no, no. No, talking about inferior. If you want to have substance, you got to realize you ain't got no power. So you got to realize the person or something that you believe in got more power than you. Talking about substance. Another definition for substance is your confidence. Your confidence. So I got to be I got to know that I'm inferior to somebody and I got to have confidence and I got to believe that they're going to support me. So in other words, when God said, John, quit your job and go start a church. Now, I know I've been working and I still ain't got everything right. Then I got somebody going to tell me to stop working and I'm going to make everything right. So you know I scratch my head. I got money coming in and ain't nothing right. And you're going to tell me to stop bringing in money and you're going to make everything right. So I got to have confidence in you. Now, in order to have confidence in you, I got to believe you got more power than I got. Because I've been working, man. I've been humping making money. And it ain't right. you telling me you're going to make it right with no money. Talk about substance. Amen. Hallelujah. In doing that, I got to believe you're going to support me. But I'm getting kicked out of my house. And you telling me you support me? You telling me I can't pay all my bills, giving you $2,000, and I'm coming up short, but that's my tithe? And you telling me you're going to make me? But I'm getting kicked out of my house, man. What you talking about? Do you believe you're inferior to me? Yes, Lord. We'll get kicked out the house because I don't want you there no more. I love this house. I got more power. I don't want you there. I got some better. Oh, they holler, glory. I got a better place for you, Abraham. But you got to get on your feet and start moving. Hallelujah. That's why Abraham believed God. Oh, thank. Listen, I want a good report. I want to know when I die that I did it God's way and I got to heaven. What are you trying to say? My substance is my evidence. What is my substance? The word of God. All I got is a bunch of words that tell me how to do something. The evidence is going to be, it's going to come to pass. Now, watch this. The evidence is, this is the definition of evidence. Evidence is proof. What's the proof? The man is walking. How you going to tell me, how you going to tell me Jesus didn't help me when I said in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And the man got up and started walking and you telling me I'm using a, another God? I'm, I'm using another God. How you going to tell me that Jesus is not on my side? I still don't have a house. I don't own one, but I still don't own a house. John done tried to buy two houses. Amen. And I still don't have a house. I still don't own one. Hallelujah. But I'm living pretty good. I ain't got no serious complaints. Really? So when they ain't serious, there ain't no complaints, are there? Come on. So evidence, one definition is proof. Watch this. The other definition is reproof. Proof meaning I can hold it. You can see it. Reproof is stop trying to see it and stop trying to hold it. 
That's the evidence. The proof is I didn't make it happen. I got reproved and I still got what I wanted, but the proof came from the reproof. Because I thought I knew how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Talking about evidence. Remember, substance is evidence. You got to believe everything God say in order to get the evidence. But without believing what he said, you would never get the evidence. Because your, you say, your, your uh, what's the word? Your substance is, God said it. How are you going to show evidence? By doing what God said. Why? Because I'm inferior to him. I don't know nothing. And because I'm inferior to him, he going to correct me on everything. He going to reprove me to prove to me I'm inferior to him. Are y'all keeping up with me? Because I ain't going to explain this no more. I'm going to talk about it the rest of the sermon. Watch this now. In order for me to show evidence, I got to have a substance. Faith is the substance. Substance. Understand, faith is substance. What's the substance? The substance is I have to realize I'm inferior to God. I have to now show that I'm inferior to God by the evidence. So when I use Jesus to get everything I want, that's my evidence that I'm inferior because whatever I got, I got it from Jesus. So somebody say, well, how did you get to this point, Jesus? You ever told somebody, say, well, how did you do Jesus? I know, I know. No, no, that's it. That's it. I'm inferior. I don't know what I'm doing. Getting ready to do this tent meeting. I ain't never done no tent meeting. I don't know what I'm doing to tell you. But God done put it in my spirit to do it. Guess what? It's going to happen. So my substance is, and listen, and I'm ready to do it. And I don't care what happened in doing it. I had no idea I was going to lose two houses to be a pastor. I had no idea about nothing I have today when I started out passing. All I know, God told me to do it. That's all I had. I didn't have no proof. I didn't have nothing. I started out with reproof. Nope, John. Lord, wait a minute. Now I need a house. I got a wife, two cardinals. I got two kids and one on the way. And you telling me I got to do what? I got to do what? What am I saying? Y'all, we going to go through obstacles. But that's your reproof to show you that you are inferior, which is going to bring about your substance, and your substance is going to bring about evidence. Come on. Thank you, G. What I tell you to go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. I'm sorry, verse 5 said what? And now, he's talking. He's telling Timothy how to be a pastor to sum it all up. Then when he get to verse 5, he said what? Say that again. If you can't control your own house, Aaron, you'll never control these folks. If you can't get Cassini, uh, Aaron, Andrew, uh, uh, Kennedy, Kenny, and Anthony to jump when you move, when you talk, you might well forget these folks. You might well forget them. You might well hang it up. Amen. I told everybody to stand up today. Tim didn't stand. I told everybody to get up. But you see, I ain't afraid of him. I put him on the spot. See, he gets mad. You think I care? Don't care. He didn't do what I told him to do. I expect him, I don't care how big he is and where he come from, I expect him to jump when I talk. I expect Jody to jump when I talk. Can I make her jump? Can I make him jump? No, I can't. But let's get some straight. You not obeying me. Don't 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 do nothing to me. But make me pick on you. If I pick on you and you leave the church, I'm gonna jump up. I can't do it no more and click my heel. The devil have left the building. If my wife get up and leave, the devil have left my house. What am I saying? If you can't control your house, you ain't gonna never control no saints. You can't be no novice over here. You can't. See, that's the problem with churches today. They are conforming to the people. Well, you know, the people won't. And the, no, see, that's why you shouldn't be no, you can't be no leader. Because, folks, listen, everybody, I don't care how many, there ain't not one person in here that really conforms to me. 
Some of y'all do pretty good, but you ain't conformed to me. You have not. Oh, hallelujah. But have I changed? I ain't going to change. We're talking about, we talking about substance. God called me to scare you, to control you, to, to, to tell you what to do. That's what I've been called to do. Now, I got some evidence. Some of y'all, well, I say, I got some evidence. Tim come to church, come to church. Me, I think me and him pretty good friends. He come and do things for me, call me up. If I ask him to do something, he'll jump. Some of y'all come to church and do what I tell you to do and won't do nothing else. He'll do everything else but won't do what I tell him in church. So all of y'all got some flaws running. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? But I'm still going to run the church. What are you talking about? Substance. Substance. Listen, there's rock. There's water in this rock, John. Yeah, right. Do you believe that I'm a supreme being? Do you believe you're inferior to me? If you, in, if you believe you're inferior to me, hit the rock like I told you. And let's see what happened. So you come along and you hit the rock. Bam. Water starts flowing. Now you realize, man, how, 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 how you do that? How you do that? Because you believed me, John, that's how you got the water. You got the water. I got it. You got the water because you believed me. Because you realized you don't know nothing. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem, y'all. We got too many people that go to church and think they know something. Y'all don't know nothing. Y'all are inferior to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Don't listen to John. That's why I make y'all read it. So when you leave here, you can say you read it. So who are you really listening to? You ain't listening to me. Come on, read. Then in verse 6, he said what? Not a novice. Not a novice. See, all y'all walking around, God is good. How you know that? Beverly, you got a house. You're doing pretty good, you know. So if God come along and take your job and put Nina on part-time and you lose that house, what you going to say? You going to say God is good? Well, you know, God used to be good. <laughs> he ain't good. I lost my house. He ain't good no more. That's what you going to say? Are you going to say he's good? Are y'all going to say he's good when he make you sick? Is he good when he gives you cancer after you get the Holy Ghost? Is he still good? Oh, hallelujah. We're talking about substance now. So did he stop being good? Because he, listen, because he took Peter off his job. Oh, Peter, leave your business and come to, is he still, am I still good, Peter? Peter, who do men say that I am? Hallelujah. Because I didn't give you what you want, John. Am I still good? Do you still believe I called you the pastor after you lose two houses? You can't hardly pay the church rent. You can't hardly pay your rent. Listen, everything you driving a raggedy car, am I still good, John? Am I still a superior being? Are you still inferior to me? Are you still inferior? Come on. Verse 6 again from the top. Not a novice. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the... He fall into condemnation. You let the devil trick you that I'm not who I say I am. So who's who? So you mean to tell me the devil convinced you that you are not inferior to me? How did the devil do that? How did the devil convince y'all that y'all are not inferior to God? We're talking about faith. When you don't believe what this word of God said, you are telling God, I'm not inferior to you. See, when you get people say, well, I know there's a God, but I think he want us to do this. I think he want us to, to be good and use our own brain. Well, show me where he said that. Because what I read, he said, take no thought. I read, he said, acknowledge me in all your ways. I read when a man think he's something, he's nothing. I read, I read all of this and more. So where did you find that at? God gave you the ability. God said, ain't nobody got all of that ability. He said, I did do this though. Okay, but one person or one group of people explained the word of God and those are the ones that I appoint to do it. Everybody else can't do it. I told somebody one time, they're going to tell me 
what the, what their pastor said. I said, okay, but I can show you the scripture, say something different. What my pastor said. I said, well, you don't know everything, John. I said, you know what? Maybe you're right. I said, but let me ask you a question. When you go to the church, why you go to church? They said, I go to church and listen to the preacher. I said, oh, that's amazing, huh? I said, when I go to church, I go to tell you something because I'm the preacher. I don't go to church to listen to no preacher. I am the preacher. So now you really think you know much as I know. I go to church to tell you stuff. I don't go to church to let nobody tell me nothing. Come on, let that sink in, y'all. I don't come to church for y'all to give me no direction. I come to church to give direction. But you think you know as much as me, and you're going to church to get. I'm giving you what you go to get, but you know more than me. Are y'all with me? Something to think about, ain't it? So, because you know why? God didn't call you to give out information. He called me to do that. He called you to go get information. He called me to give you what he sent you to go get. But you think you know as much as me. Just you know why? Because I've accepted I'm inferior. You ain't accepted that yet. You ain't accepted that you're inferior. I've accepted God is all power. I'm inferior. So whatever thou says, I believe it. Even though it looks as crooked as two shoes, two left feet shoes. But if you said there's water in this rock, I'm squeezing it, which I can't. Rubbing it. Looking at it. Throwing it. And I ain't getting no water. And then you say it, all I got to do is say, let me have some water. Whoa, 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 Lord. You told me that I can go to church with my back hurting, my knee hurting, and I can preach, and I can barely get out the bed, struggling getting dressed, barely getting to my car, and then you going to tell me when I get to church, I'm going to be fine, and then when I walk in the door, I ain't got no pain. Oh, wait a minute. I'm inferior. I believe you. What's the evidence when I can get up here and tell you my pain and you don't see them? Come on. Come on. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 2. We're doing good, y'all. We're doing good. Come on. Come on. Are y'all with me? You can't be a novice. Substance is your evidence. Substance meaning, get there. You're inferior to God. You got to put your confidence in him and he's your support. Now, let me ask you this. You ain't got to answer it. Answer it to yourself. Who woke you up this morning? Do you really believe that or that's just a cliche to you? Who got you in your right mind? If Jesus got you in your right mind, why are you still thinking? If Jesus keep you in your right mind, why are you figuring stuff out? Is Jesus your provider while you hustling? Hmm. If Jesus is your support, why are you still calling on man? You ain't, listen, you ain't got no substance, therefore there's no evidence. Because you don't really believe what the word of God say. That's why you have no evidence. You can't get evidence if you don't believe faith. Remember, faith is the evidence is the is the proof that you got faith or that you got substance so if you say you got substance why don't i see it if you say you got substance why don't i hear doubt and fear and anxiety and worry if you got substance substance meaning i have no fear yes the lion is right there but i ain't afraid yes they, 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 i got the three-day notice but i ain't afraid yes i i'm sick and I might die, but I ain't afraid. Oh, hallelujah. This is going to be a good month, two months, or three months. This faith thing. God say, listen, God, now watch this. God is getting us ready for the tent meeting. Because y'all ain't going to be able to get up in there and tell them folk about serving God. And y'all living raggedy lie. Because when you get up in the holler about God can heal you. And you sitting down today because your back hurting. Well, they came in there because their back was hurting. They might well sit down like you because you ain't got no evidence. Your substance told you to believe, but you can't provide no evidence. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. What did I tell you to go? James chapter 2. Go to verse 14. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all with me? You need some substance. Your substance is, y'all, 
You got to start doing whatever God say. Now, watch this. Watch this. I hate to, I hate to make things harder for me, but I ain't got no choice if you tell me to say it. Don't come at me for advice and don't do it. That's what I'm here for. His word, of, the word of God say, obey those who have rule over you, right? I watch out for your soul. For so if I give you advice, take it. If you don't take it, then you ain't going to have no substance. You ain't got it. That's for every scripture that's in the Bible. Do what that scripture says. Do it. You got to understand when you cast your cares upon the pastor, you're casting your cares upon God. You're getting me in trouble, Lord. But when you cast your cares upon the pastor, because he said, I put him there to help you, didn't he? Yeah. So if he helped you, I call pastors after my heart. God said, I didn't call pastors after your heart. I put that man there and he can deal with it. And if you don't deal with it, John, me and you going to have problems. Because I put you there. That's why we can listen to folks' problems and testimony and keep right on living like ain't nobody said nothing. Y'all hear somebody talking about they committed adultery and y'all y'all won't be able to function. Oh, you know, and Brother James up there and he, and he confessed he committed adultery. And, and, you know, why he up there preaching? Y'all get it? Y'all got to be able to hear stuff and don't act like, I can't, I can't reprimand you till God tell me to reprimand you. I want to set you down. God said, you can't touch him. Leave him alone. Why, Lord? Because I said so. I ain't explaining everything to you, John. I don't have to. I don't have to explain nothing to y'all if I don't want to. Oh, hallelujah. See, that's why I say I ain't going to put this pressure on me. But hey, it's in the Bible. I, I, you see what I'm saying? I got to preach something I don't even want to preach. Because it put pressure on me. Because y'all go, listen, you're going to have somebody, well, Pastor, you said that if we got a problem, we can tell you anything. And I got to listen to it because you're right. It's true. And I can't hold it against you. <laughs> what you laughing so hard for? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Are we at verse 14? Read. He said, well, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? So y'all, I got faith, I got faith, and won't even pay your tithes. I got faith, and I got faith, and you won't even get to church like I tell you. I got faith, and I got faith, and you can't love no enemy. So where's the works? You're talking about you got faith. Where's the evidence of your substance? You claiming you got the substance. You claiming you're going to make a, a, a sweet potato pie. And I go in the house, you ain't got no ingredients. That's what he's saying. How you going to say, I'm, I'm getting ready to make a sweet potato pie. What you doing, Sister Porter? I'm getting ready to make a sweet potato pie. Where's the sweet potato? I'm getting ready to make it in a few minutes. You ain't going to go to the store? No, I'm getting ready to make it. Okay. I'm going back and watch the Western because I know you ain't making no sweet potato. I don't see no substance. How you going to tell folk that you serve God and you can't even go to church like you're supposed to? How you gonna tell? Oh, glory, hallelujah! How you gonna tell folks you serve God and you still you ain't even dressing appropriately? How you gonna tell a person you gonna serve God and you got a bad attitude? <coughs> How you gonna tell a person you serve God and you get an attitude when certain people get up and preach? How you gonna tell folks you serve God and you can't even stand to be around your brothers and sisters? Where's your substance? I don't see no substance. I hear your mouth selling wolf tickets, but I don't see nothing evident according to what you say you believe. I don't see no. Show me some evidence. Show me some evidence. Because I don't see none. Y'all wonder why you can't get nobody saved? Because they don't see no evidence. You keep talking substance. How you going to make the pie? There's no sweet potatoes. I don't see no pie pan. I don't see no, 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 uh, uh, butter. I don't even know how to make it. I got to think of it. Sister Twyla, how am I going to make it? I'm missing all of the ingredients, but I'm getting ready to make it. Sister Diane, I'm getting ready to make it, but I don't see no ingredients. Talking about substance. How you going to convince somebody you serve God? That's why you can't be a novice over here. Listen, you think I ain't had people that I didn't like? I told y'all I had one person I didn't like, didn't hate her. 
But I ain't like it either. But every time we had a council, I made sure I got, I sat beside her in the pulpit. I made sure I sat beside her everywhere we go. Because we're going to kick this bad boy. We're getting this monkey off my back. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I ain't got no problem whatsoever. So the evidence is, we friends now. I don't know how she thought, but I know how I thought. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all worry about what other people thinking instead of worrying about what you thinking. Because you don't know what other people thinking. And you say, yes, I do. Well, they know what you're thinking by your evidence, just like you know what they're thinking by their evidence. See how quick I can show you how you're flawed? Because they base what you base what you feel about. Okay, so you say a person is mean. How did you come up with that conclusion? How did you come up with that special? How did you come up with a conclusion that Aaron is mean? How did you do that? Look at him. Smile, Aaron, just smile. Does, he, does that look mean? So how did you come up with the conclusion that he's mean? Because of his evidence. Because of the way he acts. Wait a minute. I'm going to hit her real hard. So you come up with a conclusion that she's a whore. How did you come up with that conclusion? Hmm. <laughs> By your evidence. So y'all running around. She ain't no whore. Don't nobody go off the deep end. Well, <laughs> we all are. <laughs> but y'all know. But here's my point. Here's my point. How do we come up with these conclusions? Evidence. So watch this. So why don't we get some evidence that we holy? Why don't we get some evidence that we righteous? Why don't we get some evidence that we that we believe God? Why don't we get some why don't we get some evidence that everything about me and Jesus is right cuz I got evidence. Why don't we get some evidence that you believe God, John? I done told y'all about all the obstacles that we've gone through being at this church. All of them. I got a new one for you. My buddy, Mr. Botox, just about gone. The family members getting ready to take over. Are they going to let me stay behind like he did? Good question. I ain't begging y'all for no money. I ain't never begging and I ain't going to start. And if we get kicked out, y'all may come to church one day and we kicked out. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go find us another spot and keep on living. And I'm going to pay them whatever I owe them in the process. Why? Because my evidence got to be, listen, watch this. Y'all said, well, God would never allow that to happen when he kicked Abraham out. He kicked like this. He kicked David out. He kicked a lot of folks out. But watch this. God said, but they had so much substance and faith in me, it ain't even worth it for them to have ever walked on this earth. What am I saying? Don't base your obstacles on your faith. Be, oh, hallelujah. Listen, let your faith control your obstacles. Who is your faith? Jesus. What do you mean? I got a supreme being. I'm inferior. I don't know what to do. But I got a God that can get water out of a rock. And it ain't nowhere, nobody ever proved in science that there's water in a rock. Come on, read. So what am I talking about, y'all? Y'all better come up with some works. Y'all better start showing people that y'all believe in Jesus. Come on, read. 15, he said, what? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, and be warned and filled without, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things. Come here, special. I'm using you. So y'all see her broke. You see her raggedy. She ain't got no money. She ain't got no clothes. She ain't saved. And she come to the church and ask for food or clothes or money. And y'all say, well, we ain't got to go get it. Okay. How's she going to go get it? How's she going to go get it? How can she go get something when she don't have the capability of doing it? She don't have the capability of doing it because if she had the capability, she would have done it. She would have never came to you in the first place. So how, watch this. Keep up with me now. So Peter, I mean, James is saying, if you believe that something can happen because the person has the ability to do it by themselves, 
Are y'all with me? If you believe a person has the ability to do it by themselves, then why don't you do the same? Because if she could do it by herself, she would have never asked you, Beverly. So let's go spiritual with that now. If you believe you can get yourself to heaven, then why don't you dump Jesus? Talking about faith? You want, you want her to have faith and go do something she can't do? God says, why don't you have faith and do something you can't do? God is saying, the person that's asking you just showed you they are inferior to you. That's why they asked you. Are y'all with me? He giving you a good example here, but people miss it. He said, the person that asked you for that $20, Beverly, they are showing inferiority to you. They believe you can give them $20. What make them think you can give them $20? Because you got out of a nice car and you got on a nice suit, you well dressed, you must have $20. Your evidence told them that. Are y'all with me? Your evidence told them you was capable of doing that, Nikki. Your evidence. You didn't get out the car all raggedy, nasty looking. You got out the car like somebody that's well kept. They know you got $20, Tommy. Because your evidence. And they just told you that I'm inferior to you by asking you. That's the works. Your work showed them that you got $20. Now, you may not have it. But for the sake of discussion, I guarantee you have it. You just don't want to give it up. Oh, hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Watch the next scripture now. Look, I, I see Jesus, God know how to straighten us out. But see, people don't like to be straightened out. Read. What does it say? This wisdom teaches not from above, but it's earthly, sensual. For you... Listen, for that person to believe that you got $20 ain't got nothing to do with spirituality. It's earthly. I'm watching what you got on. It's devilish. I believe you got it because of the way you look. I'm not thinking straight. Because I believe you got it because I'm going by the evidence that I see on you. In other words, I'm going by your works. So all of your works regarding natural things is what? Devilish. And what else? What, what else the word he got there? What, what verse was there? I guess I skipped the verse, huh? Go, come on, go to verse 14. He said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth, don't you lie. Because what you are saying, I don't have it. And you telling a lie, you do have it. Because your evidence showed you got it. And all that's coming from is devilly. That ain't from God. Now it technically is because he made it. But what I'm saying, that's coming from your flesh. That's, that's coming, huh? I'm still in James. I skipped the verse, then I went back. I read 15 or something. I don't know what I read. But I'm back in 14. I done changed, huh? That means I need to go over there, huh, Lord? Wait a minute. God done taught me something. I missed something. We're going to go back. Or should I stay? Give me a second. We go back. That's why I love God. I was supposed to, well, it take too long to explain that to y'all. See, I was supposed to use that last night, and I didn't. Somehow I got, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We'll deal with that tonight. Come on. Go to verse 14. Oh, man, Lord, wait a minute. I'm back in chapter, wait a minute. I know what I read. Hang tough. Okay. All right. I got it. Y'all hold that for tonight. Okay, come on. Let's go back to chapter 2, verse 14. See, I'm inferior. Thank you, Jesus. I got I to gotta, I gotta regroup my thoughts. Give me a second. See, let, let, me, let me help the ministers out. Just for all y'all, but for the ministers. See, that's why it pays when God is giving you a message. Pay attention. Because no matter what you write down, you think, well, I ain't going to say that. I'm going to say that. God know how to throw it right back in and see you had have done what I told you last night, John. You wouldn't be up there confused now. Because I'm inferior. 
I'm inferior. Do what he tell you and stop changing stuff. Because you feel, well, I don't want to say that. Are y'all with me? That's for the ministers. I think they understand what I'm saying. Come on. Verse 15. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Verse 16. He said, and what do you say unto them? Depart in peace and be worn and filled, notwithstanding, ye give to them those things which are needful to the body. What pro- Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. Now I see how that mix all in, but last night I couldn't see that. But anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm repenting. Can I repent while I preach? Amen. If I don't give her what she need, if I don't give her what she need, how she going to have faith? God say, if I don't give y'all what y'all ask me for, how y'all going to get faith? How y'all going to get some evidence if I don't become your substance? How is she going to say them church folks over there is good when we don't ever help her when she come around? There ain't no evidence. Watch this. How are we going to say God is good and he never help us when we call on him? Watch this. Got one better than that. How you going to say God is good and you never call on him? You use your own intellect. Remember, you're inferior to him. So whatever you're coming up with ain't the truth because you're inferior to him, but you think what you're doing is right. For instance, that's why he said you got to be born again. You thought, you thought that you know how to get a job. And you, because you got a job, didn't you? But look how that job turned out. You, some of y'all had no idea until I taught you that you can go in and tell the, 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 the prospective employer, I don't work on Sundays, I don't work Wednesday nights. Now, if I got to work those days, I don't want the job. Just that simple. And you walked out with the job. You went in and told the boss before he became your boss what you will and will not do. And he bowed to you. Amen? He bowed to you. But you would have never thought you, you had that much power, did you? You know what? Because you don't. Because you're inferior. God twisted that person's mind and made them accept. But you could never twist their mind. Because they'll look at you like, get out of here then. You ain't getting no job. Get out of here. But God said, not so. You're going to get what you want. Because you're asking them based on what I told you to do. Wait a minute. There's nowhere in the Bible recorded where God told you to say that. Is it? Nowhere. Who told you to say that? Pastor told you to say that. Oh, Holly. See, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't keeping up with me. God give me instructions on how to tell y'all to use his word. And we don't want to do it. Because listen, you don't know what his word is really saying. So you got to get some work. So that's why I'm telling us today. Listen, your substance is believe whatever God say. He ain't going to say it the way you want to hear it all the time. But he going to say it where you understand it. That's why he said, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall, how you going to get it right? Because I can't have all of y'all understanding my word. It'll be too much confusion, which is what's going on in the world today. We got too many people to call themselves to be preachers and they confusing everybody else because they think they know the word of God because they done said, they, they um, spoke in tongues or the devil done gave them some tongues. Or somebody said, because you said you accepted God in your heart, you say, oh, hallelujah. In that case, God always been in my heart. Because I was always scared of church folks. I was scared of the church and I was scared of church girls. I was scared of church folk. So God was always in my, but I went and got drunk. Come on, read. Well, come on, what verse we at? 18. We got it? He said, well, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have work. Show me thy faith and I'll show you my faith. Read the next verse. What the next verse say? Hmm. God want me to talk about that verse. Read that one again. Thou believe there is. Muhammad said there's what? One God, don't it? Judah, I mean, uh, Jehovah's Witness said there's what? Right? Um. Uh, Church of God in Christ say there's one God, but they teach like it's three. Amen. 
What is it? Judaism says there's uh, 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 Lutheran says there's Amen. And the Bible said the devil know there's and he shake. Who in here got the Holy Ghost? You got the Holy Ghost? You speaking in tongues? You know, you, you say yabba dabba do and my foot is brand new. You, you, you speaking in tongues, right? Okay. Well, well, how come you shaking from shaking at the devil instead of the devil shaking at you? How come you don't believe that no weapon formed against you going to prosper because you got me on the inside? How come you don't believe that all things are possible for you because you got me on the inside? How come you, how come the devil ain't running from you like he did with me when I showed up? He, the devil was backing up and asking, could he do something? And I had to give him, how come y'all ain't got, now why did he say, y'all hollering about y'all got faith and y'all still fighting something that, it had, that ain't got no power. Show me in the scripture one time where Jesus fought the devil. They, they say in the Bible that Michael and, and Gabriel fought him, right? And God showed up and the devil bowed, didn't he? When, when, when Jesus came and the man had been in the tomb cutting himself, when Jesus showed up, the devil started doing this. One man had tent, uh, uh, a legion. A legion is a thousand. Or is it 10,000? Can't remember right now. But all of them demons ran twice. All of them. When Jesus showed up, all right, be it us to go over there. Don't do. Wait a minute. So how come the devil got y'all running? Jesus didn't run not one time. Not one time did he run. He didn't even get afraid. Wait a minute. Hot doggy. Somebody walked up on him with leprosy. And they say leprosy was a contagious, nasty disease. Jesus walked up and touched him. Remind me of Mother Hendrick. Y'all, what, y'all? Oh, you got a cold. Can you get away from me? I went and hugged and kissed him with her cold. I ain't got one yet. I got substance. I believe God. Y'all got the same Holy Ghost I got, Dre. Or do you? Where's your substance? Show me some works. Show me that you can touch a person with pink eye and don't worry about getting it. Show me. Show me. Show me that you can touch a sickness that, that man have said is very contagious and it don't affect you. Show me. Show me you can pray for a person that's demon possessed and ain't worried about them getting on you. You got preacher on why don't take them, they're gonna transfer a spirit. Come on, get over here, spirit. Spirit ain't gonna come, spirit gonna go the other way. Because he said the devil shake, don't he? But y'all, the devil got y'all shaking. Show me some substance. He said, no weapon, Beverly. No weapon. I formed the weapon. I made the weapon. But they can't touch you if you believe in me. If you use the substance, if you have faith in me, nobody can do. Who can harm you if God be for you? Is God for you? He's on the inside of you. So why are you afraid? He's for you. But if you don't show me no substance, there ain't gonna never be no evidence. So you're afraid. Well, you know, if I pay my tithes, I can't pay my rent. Yes, you can. Pay what you got. Tell them, hey, I'm $200 short. You'll get it in two weeks. Well, I don't like that. Do you want the $800? Because I can hold the eight and pay you the whole thousand next week, and I'll pay you your $30 late fee. But you, I, that's all you got. Now, it's your call because you ain't going to kick me out because I'm five days late. Amen. Take the 800 Bite your lip and I'll give you the two next week. Don't say it like that. I'm just saying that's how you deal with it, y'all. Let God show some evidence. Show some evidence. I mean, show some substance. Let me see. So you talking about you got faith but ain't got no works. What verse we stop there? What, what verse was it? 19 verse 20 said what? Faith without works is, if you don't have no substance, there'll never be evidence. Come on, keep reading. He said, what else? 
Oh, glory. Listen to this. Listen to this. Was not Abraham our father justified by work when he offered up Isaac his son upon the altar? God told Abraham, kill your son. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all look at me. Before before God, I mean, before Abraham offered up his son, God told Abraham, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Right? Now, I, I wrote that scripture down, I think. I'm going to have to use that one tonight, but let me bring it up now. Before God, I mean, before uh, Abraham had Isaac, God told him he's going to make him a father of many nations. Right? Okay, here's Isaac coming on the scene. Amen. And then God said, go kill him. Now, Abraham could have said, well, Lord, if I kill him, then how am I going to be a father of many nations? Abraham, you're not thinking like I'm thinking. I know what I'm doing. Do you think, do you think you got power? Because he, he already messed up. He done went and slept with that, that baby, that baby, I mean, that maid. And now he got another son called Ishmael. Amen. So now you got two sons. See, you already messed up because you thought you knew what you were doing because you didn't know I could get your wife pregnant. You didn't know I could make Sarah have a baby at 90 years, 95 years. You didn't know that because you're inferior to me. Oh, y'all better listen to me here. I'm getting ready to call. Y'all inferior to God. Y'all don't know what God is capable of doing. Listen, y'all think because y'all do this, it's coming to a close. Y'all think because you don't have this, that things are so hard. God said, if I can make a 95-year-old woman get pregnant, and because Abraham didn't believe God at that point and listened to his wife and got another baby, that's why you got over there Iran and Iraq. They don't even know their brothers. Maybe they do know their brothers. They're over there fighting against each other. I mean, Israel fighting against Iran and Iraq. They, they brothers. Ishmael's side and Isaac's side. That's all it is. Hallelujah. All because Abraham listened to his wife. He didn't rule his house. He should have told that woman, get out of here. I ain't sleeping with nobody but you. You my wife. But he didn't rule his house well. Look at the confusion came in. Amen. So God is saying, I told Abraham, I'm going to make him a father of many nations before he got a son. And then when he got a son, I told him to go kill him. How in the world am I going to have a father of many nations? But see, he didn't realize John Portis is his son. By faith, it's a spiritual thing. Come on, read that again. Because y'all done lost track what I'm saying. He said, when he offered up Isaac upon the altar, 22 said, see it thou how faith wrought his work and what? And by works was If Abraham had not killed that boy, we wouldn't be here today, y'all. Y'all know that? Did he ever kill him? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He never physically killed him, but in the eyes of God, he killed him. Because he thought about it. Oh, hallelujah. Keep telling y'all, when you thought about it, you did it. When you think about doing something, you've done it. Regardless of what you think, because in the eyes of God, God don't go by the physical. God go by the thought. He said, that's why I'm going to judge you on your thought. Watch this. And the intent. That's Bible. So guess what we got to do? Stop thinking it. What we got to do? When you, oh, glory, hallelujah. When you doubt God or when you think about not doing what God told you to do, that's your sin. You just carry it out. But the fact that you thought about, what am I saying? Let's go back to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to give you the rest of it tonight. See, that's why I got to preach it double for y'all to get the whole thing. I got to read one more scripture, Lord. Go to. Go to. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Y'all ain't got nothing to do. Amen. Say amen. amen. Yep, that's a light amen. That's all right. I ain't through preaching still. And I listen, and this is the other thing I know. Faith is a hard thing to accept, grasp, deal with, because you were you you saying I got to live something I've never lived. I got to live something I never saw. I got to live something I never heard. But one time, I got to live something that other folks won't do. I got to live this. And yet, I don't want to live it, but when I read it, I'm supposed to live it. 
Ephesians chapter 2. Um, verse 8. That ain't the one I want. Romans chapter 4. That's the one I want. Romans chapter 4. And then I'm going to let you go. Amen. I got somebody that said they wanted to get baptized. Amen. I told her, wait after the sermon. And she's still going to get baptized? Are you still getting baptized? That's right. That's what I want. Amen. But, but, see, you can come out the water with the Holy Ghost. Just believe God going to give it to you. Come on. Romans chapter 4. Let me see if this is the verse I want. Yeah, but I'm going to have to pick up from this tonight. Come on. Romans chapter 4. Let's go to verse 16. Amen. I started to name the sermon, you got to live like you have it. You got to live like you have it. Amen. You got to live like you have it. Now, you, that's what we're supposed to do, but that ain't the name of the sermon. The name of the sermon is substance is your evidence. Now, remember, God say faith is the substance and it's the evidence of what you say you believe, which is faith in God. So your substance got to be whatever God say, I'm going to do it. And then your evidence is going to come out. It's going to, people going to see it. Come on. Uh, chapter four, verse 16. What does it say? Therefore, everybody with me. Come on, everybody, please read these last two verses with me. Do that for me. Verse six, uh, 16, is it? Yeah. 16, read what it say. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure in all the seed, not but to also to the father of us all. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many as it is written. It, he told him, I made you a father of many nations. He had never given Abraham a son. Now Abraham had to believe he's going to be the father of many nations, but I don't even have no child. And he had to live a life like he was going to be the father, but he had no child. Come on, what else he said? Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and do what? Do what? Call it those things what? You going to heaven? So you calling something that's going to happen that ain't happened. Are you healed today? Well, you calling something that ain't happened because your knees still hurt. Are you going to get a college education, Simone? Where are you? But you calling those things and you ain't finished yet, have you? Hallelujah. Some of y'all think you're going to get married, but you calling that and you ain't got no boyfriend. But you do what you need to do to get a boyfriend, don't you? You want a wife? You working on a wife and you ain't got one. You working on a husband and you ain't got one. Stop lying. But you calling those things to be as though they are, but they ain't happened yet. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How come you can work so hard on carnal stuff, but you don't work hard on spiritual stuff? Watch this. I'm going to turn the world upside down. And I can't even get a hundred saints. But I'm talking about I'm turning the world I always I'm a body slam the world when it comes to the word of God. What, why, how you say that? I'm like God. Didn't God say he read it? He said he did what? And called those things which be not as though he told Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations and you ain't even got a, a son yet. Because God know what he's doing. What am I saying? God said, because I can bring water out of a rock. You got to understand, John, in order for you to have substance, you got to realize you're inferior to me. In order for you to have something, John, you got to come to the point where you have confidence in me, not yourself. In order for you to have comf uh, something, John, you got to lean on me. What we say next time, lean on Jesus. I will never last in all. Hallelujah. Listen, how you going to get something when you are inferior to get anything? That's why he says, when a man thinks himself to be something, when he's nothing, 
you deceiving yourself because you don't have the power to do nothing, Mishi. You ain't got the power to do nothing. And until you realize you are inferior to me, until y'all realize you are inferior to God, you ain't going to do nothing. So you might as well get some faith because if you don't accept me as your supreme being, you're going to hell. And you don't even believe that, do you? He said, well, that's okay. One thing he's definitely going to prove. Come on, minister, as y'all come down. One thing he's definitely going to prove. One thing he's definitely going to prove, whether you believe it or not, is that he's God. And besides him, because he put it like this, every knee. So atheists, James, you can get ready. Come on. Uh, uh, um, name just went out of my head. I know it. Come on, so now you're getting baptized. Follow, follow, uh, so, yeah, take her. She's getting baptized. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, listen. The Bible said every knee shall bow and every tongue Micaiah, you go with her because you're going to be working hard come May. So you need to learn the routine of getting people baptized. You're going to work hard in May, honey. I'm, you know, I know you're going to have some help, but I'm letting you know. Um, uh, listen, listen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So that's one thing he's going to do whether you want it or not. You're going to find out who's running things. Come on. You know you, you want faith and you lacking substance. Come on and get some prayer. Come on, get some prayer. Amen. Listen, without substance, you ain't going nowhere. You got to start calling God out for what he promised you, what he said. Because if you don't get no substance, there is no faith. And without faith, it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible. Without faith, you ain't going to never get right with God. Without you knowing God is the supreme being. Who else in here that have not been baptized that want to be baptized? Come on, we don't have to baptize one person. We can baptize three or four of you. Come on. You know you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. You ever, I'll talk to him later. If you haven't, because I don't baptize nobody, they don't understand it. You got to understand it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get some something? Whatever you want to give me, something to drink. Amen. I'll let you chew. Doesn't matter. Whatever you chew. Listen, listen. Without substance, it's time for y'all to start doing what you're talking. Stop running your mouth, and I don't see no evidence. Because when you tell me that you love God and you get all excited because I preach a specific sermon hollering about acting, acting like you got it all together then I look at your evidence then I know you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing because I watch you. God watches you. Why? Because you got to have evidence if you got something. You can't make a sweet potato pie and you don't have no ingredients. You don't even have a recipe. But you're going to make a sweet potato pie. Y'all want to serve God and you ain't got no Holy Ghost. You ain't got the recipe. If you ain't have the Holy Ghost, how you going to please God? You don't have the recipe. Should have been talking about that. That's going to come up again tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, Nina, sing something. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest. Thank you, Lord. Upon his promise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, just come on. Just to know the said the Lord. Where's my other minister? Jesus, oh. Jesus, how I trust him. You gotta trust him. How 
him over you gotta trust him 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 you have to trust him you have to trust him grace to trust him if y'all gonna walk around talking about how saved you are i need to see it god need to see it people need to see it people need to see it if people don't see it they don't believe it just like you just like you if you don't see it you don't believe it oh hallelujah we got the holy ghost that's all we need to see from that point on we just do it because God said it that's the substance that's the substance Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and more thank you Lord Jesus Jesus precious hallelujah Jesus oh for your grace to trust him more jesus jesus how i trust hallelujah him, how I substance is knowing you are inferior to god he's your support he's your confidence jesus, evidence is jesus, proof which is reproof and you come I left out that I'm going to say that for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, it's sweet. Come on, everybody standing. Come on, stand. Come on, sing that song. Sing it with Sister Nina. Yes, Lord. Just from Jesus. Hallelujah. And rest and joy and peace. Yes. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus how, how I, I trust how him. How I trust him. How I prove, how I prove him, him more, and more and more. Hallelujah. That's your Jesus, evidence. Jesus. Yes. Fresh. Precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to Come on, sing it again. Sing that chorus again. Come on, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how, how I, I trust him. How I Come on, anybody else want to be baptized? Baptism is when God forgives you of all Jesus, your sin. They all gone. All your sins are gone. All you got to do, all you got to do is go down in the water in his name. We got the clothes. We got everything you need. You don't have to make no appointment. Today is your appointment. Today is your appointment. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, oh for the grace to trust him more. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for your one more time, sing it again. Jesus, 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 how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, oh, oh for your grace to trust him more. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. 
Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need substance. We need to show faith. We need to let people see. Amen. We need to show people. I believe. I believe him. I believe him. Brother, Brother Tommy said something to me recently. He said, Pastor, I'm struggling, but I'm going out fighting. That told me right there he wasn't going to lose. The reason we lose, y'all, we stop fighting. We stop believing God. That, that stuck with me. I mean, it ain't that I didn't know, but it was encouraging. He said, Pastor, well, I, I, I ain't going to just bow out. I'm going out swinging. Now, if I get knocked out, but I didn't just lay there and let you knock me out. I went out swinging. Listen, if we're going to serve God, we got to go down swinging. Do y'all get what I'm saying? You don't just bow. You go out swinging. I don't care how hard it gets. Don't you stop believing God. That's going out swinging. Because you know from the jump street. You was inferior. You knew from the start you were, well, I hope you knew you was inferior. You knew you was dependent on God from day one. Let's go out swinging. Let's go out swinging. We, let's go out swinging. That's right. We got somebody that got baptized. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think God going to let you fail, all of the people you done brought to church? Tell me they see you doing something, you got some evidence. Go out swinging. You gonna, trust me, you're going you gonna to show somebody else. Man, I'm believing God. Go out swinging, baby. Don't, don't just get knocked out standing there. You're going to get knocked out. Make sure you were swinging when you got knocked out. And I guarantee you, you would never get knocked out. Because you always are able to block it. But to just stand there. But when you're doing this. Oh, hallelujah. That's fine. What am I saying, y'all? Time for us to get some substance. So we can have some evidence. Amen. That's why the Bible said, I'm going to shut up. The Bible said we overcame by the word of our. Because we told somebody, I've been where you are. I came out. Hallelujah. The only reason I came out is because I waited, I trusted, I believed in God. I got evidence. I got evidence you can get evicted and kicked out of a house one day. And on your way, after you done packed up, you go into another house. I'm not a novice. And I never stop preaching. I'm packing up. Getting ready to go. And don't know where I'm going. In route. God provided a better place. So don't tell me what God can't do. I'm not a novice at this. Why don't I got substance. And because of my substance. Y'all see the evidence. And everybody said. Come on, let's give God some hand praise. Come on, Sister Letitia going to dismiss us. Adam West, 3.30. I ask y'all to hang with me all day and watch what you get. Amen. Trust me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I think we all want some evidence after today, right? Hallelujah. The man of God said we need to just know that we're inferior to God. Hallelujah. And that we can't do nothing without God. We can't do it. But if we give him all the glory, if we give him all power over us, hallelujah, we'll see that evidence. Hallelujah. We got a couple of announcements that we don't want to miss. Um, all married couples, reminder, need to pay their $60 for the out the out the out outreach 
marriage seminar. Okay. Um, by next Sunday, remember to bring another married couple. Pay $60 to Sister Micaiah. Okay? So every couple, bring a couple. Make sure to pay your $60 by next Sunday. Okay? All right. Because you don't want your marriage to be the only one to survive. Who are you going to go out with? Hallelujah. You get another couple on the right track, you got somebody to go out with. All right. All right. No, sir. I'm married to Jesus. I get another single person married to Jesus. I got somebody to talk to. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Micaiah also wants a short meeting after the morning service with, um, oh, in the pastor's office with First, first Lady Sabrina and Twyla. All right? So First Lady Sabrina and Twyla, Sister Micaiah is saying, come on in pastor's office. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thanks be to God. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we just thank you for this word, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for putting it down in our souls, Lord Jesus. That we can hold on to it, Lord Jesus. That we won't let it go, Lord Jesus. No matter what it looks like, Lord Jesus. That we just remember to keep you first, Lord Jesus. And our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. Keep us, Lord Jesus, until we meet again at the appointed time. Down there at Adams and West. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we could be a witness, Lord Jesus, to that, to that, to that building, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, Tony. Check one, two. It's working fine now. One, two, one. Two, one, two, da 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 da